When we begin to talk about relapsed myeloma, um, there are a number of regimens that come to mind for use in that, si in that situation. Almost all trials that have been done looking at triplets versus doublets have established the benefit of a triplet-based approach, both in terms of progression-free and overall survival. The regimens that we clearly have data on and that are supported by the NCCN include things like KRD, carfilzomib lendex, ERD, elotuzumab lendex, DRD, daratumumab with lendex, DVD, daratumumab with bortezomib and dex, as well as uh, uh, PVD, which is panabinostat in combination with bortezomib and dex. And most recently now we have new data on a different P, pomalidomide, in combination with bortezomib and dex based on the optimum study. As we think about the types of relapse, I think it's important to use that to make decisions about when to initiate salvage therapy. For patients who have pure biochemical relapse and are standard risk, I don't jump in to treat them immediately. I watch them, try and get a sense for the tempo of their relapse, and what I do now that I didn't used to do before is get a PET CT scan to understand whether or not, even though they look indolent and biochemical, do they have new bone lesions? Because if they do, then that to me hastens the decision about when to start treatment. On the other hand, patients with symptomatic relapse clearly need treatment. If they're a high-risk patient with biochemical relapse, I'm probably going to initiate therapy sooner rather than later. So I think taking into account how long they were in remission, what is their original genetics, and what's the tempo of their relapse flavors into how you decide when to treat them. When we think about how to sequence agents in the context of relapse disease, I think it's important to realize that most patients will have had RVD up front now, they may or may not have had a transplant, and they will likely have had lenalidomide maintenance. And what the LEN maintenance, in my mind, really does is take many of those randomized phase three trials, KRD versus RD, DRD versus RD, ERD versus RD, I think it makes them less relevant for me. And so what I'm really thinking about is going back to a proteasome inhibitor, so something like Dara bortezomib dex, or going to the second generation imid like pomalidomide. And so what we have tended to use at our center is pomalidomide in combination with DARA, uh, based on the MMY1001 study, where uh, there were over 100 patients treated with dara pom dex clearly an active regimen, and this led to the FDA approval of dara pom dex in the relapsed myeloma setting. More recently, we have data from the Optimism trial that suggests POM can be partnered with bortezomib. That clearly is a very active regimen and in a phase three trial demonstrated significant improvement in progression-free survival and overall survival. And there is emerging data on exasimib with pomalidomide and dexamethasone as well, an all oral regimen in the salvage setting. Figuring out which of those is best for your patient in addition to carfilzomib-based approaches, I think is an important part of the discussion. When we think about carfilzomib in the context of relapsed myeloma, there certainly are a number of partners we can talk about. There's data combining with cyclophosphamide, there's data combining with pomalidomide, uh, and there's data combining with daratumumab as well. So any of those are potentially viable uh, uh, salvage regimens in the first or second relapse setting. What we have seen more recently is a randomized phase three trial comparing once a week versus twice a week dosing of carfilzomib in the ARO study. And what's really interesting about that is that the once a week dosing did not appear to have more side effects or toxicity, but clearly appeared to have a longer progression-free survival than the twice a week dosing. Now, the important things to remember about this is that the twice a week dosing used the 2027 dosing of carfilzomib. It didn't use the 56 milligrams per meter squared that the Endeavor trial gave us. The once a week dosing used 70 milligrams per meter squared once a week. So we'd seen hints about that from a phase one, two trial, that this is a phase three trial really establishing that dose in the context of myeloma. One of the challenges in dealing with relapsed myeloma is of overcoming drug resistance. And we know, for instance, that cells can become resistant to proteasome inhibitors, cells can become resistant to imids. We see that with LEN, we see that with POM, we see that with THAL, bortezomib as well. So the second generation agents clearly are more potent than the first generation and may help to overcome some of that resistance. We know that HDAC inhibitors such as panabinostat can overcome proteasome inhibitor resistance. We saw that with bortezomib in the Panorama trial, and we've also seen it with carfilzomib in a number of phase two trials uh, that have been published and presented as well. 
the antibodies really bring in a different flavor. And that what they really allow us to do is to potentially overcome resistance not through intracellular signaling, but through extracellular immune modulation. And that's really an important new mechanism that we've not been able to do up until the last few years.